The state coach, Coach Chris Kleiman. Coach, welcome, and your thoughts about the upcoming season. Well, it's great to be here and great to see everybody. It's uh, uh, refreshing to be able to have face-to-face -face conversations and so happy that the Big 12 was able to put this on. And, and uh, I know that uh, all of us coaches and all the student athletes are here are excited about uh, getting back to some normalcy and, and away from the Zooms and being able to, uh, to be around uh, uh, all of you and, and all of us together. And so uh, kudos to uh, Commissioner Bowlesby um, for the great uh, oversight through last year to get us through a really tough, difficult, tough time. Uh, we had a difficult uh, season last year in a number of respects, but uh, I think if you don't grow and learn from something, then it, uh, uh, it, it uh, really can be overshadowed the, uh, the, the problems that you had. And, and so we, we really grew, and uh, I learned an awful lot about myself as a leader, about myself as a coach, about myself as a, as a mentor, and our staff did as well. Um, we had some really good wins and some good times. We had some really tough times. And some of those tough times weren't even on the field, but uh, seeing kids get pulled off the field, seeing kids get tapped on the shoulder and be out. Uh, and then four other buddies say, well, I had dinner with that guy last night. I'll probably be next uh, to seeing guys uh, get on the, the bus to go to an airport and get taken off the bus and say, sorry, you just didn't pass the last test. And uh, all that stuff hopefully is behind us and, and we can get ready for a great football season. Our guys are working extremely hard. Uh, we've had a really good spring and an exceptional summer. We have a new strength and conditioning staff led by True Carroll, uh, who has made an unbelievable impact on our football team and on our football players and has helped enhance the already good culture at Kansas State uh, to another level. Uh, I, I feel really good about uh, us going into uh, 2021. It starts off with our quarterback, having Skylar Thompson back. Uh, but I also will throw Will Howard into that mix too because we have two starting quarterbacks uh, returning and, and it's pretty cool when um, quarterback oftentimes is a, is a position that uh, you either have one or you have none and we have uh, at least two and some other kids that uh, potentially have a chance. Uh, offensive line is returning intact and, and we played nine guys there. Uh, have a really good uh, uh, nucleus of wide receivers and tight ends that uh, we have the ability to get the football to and then we have a pretty good tailback in Deuce Vaughn uh, that is as humble as, as the day is long and uh, absolutely love how he's handled the uh, accolades and success that he has had because he hasn't felt like he's arrived. He felt like he has uh, got more to prove and uh, an unbelievable young man with an unbelievable uh, family and set of parents that uh, uh, taught him the right way and, and he's a, a, a tremendous leader and a tremendous football player. Where well, we have to make great improvements is on defense. Uh, we lost a couple of really good players on the defensive side that are playing at the next level. Wyatt Hubert's one that jumps out at me. But uh, where we have to make great strides is on defense. We were not uh, uh, a very good defense uh, throughout the last year. We had a couple of, of nice moments on defense, but uh, not good enough in this league to be successful. Um, and that's uh, something that we're going to work like heck to get uh, shored up. And uh, uh, I look forward to the challenge of, of our guys, Jerron McPherson, representing our defense today. And, and I know he looks forward to that challenge as well. We had a really good uh, spring uh, implementing a, a lot of new defensive kids and uh, look forward to see what that, uh, uh, how that comes to, to fruition this fall. Special teams has always been a staple at Kansas State. We'll continue to be uh, this year as well. We have a tremendous returner in Phillip Brooks and uh, a, a really good scheme. Uh, to try to get him the ball on punt and kick returns. And, and then uh, uh, we've got a really good punter coming back and a, and a good kicker as well. So I'm excited about uh, uh, getting back to normalcy. I'm excited about what uh, the 2021 season is going to bring. And uh, as, as always, this league is so difficult. And uh, uh, each week we got to try to uh, have great game plans, come up with uh, ways to be successful. So with that, we'll open up for questions. OK, thank you, Coach. Questions for the coach? We got a question on the outside, about three quarters of the way back. He's right behind you. Hey, Coach Tim Fitzgerald, Go Power Cat. Um, the first year for a new coach is always a feeling out process, an acclimation, and then you go into a COVID year. Does this make year three even more uh, kind of important for your program? Well, Fitz, it's great to see you. Uh, it, uh, all seasons are important. I thought the first season was important and to get jump started. 
and I thought the second season to say that you can keep it going is important. And now we're into the third season, and it's kind of like we're resetting a little bit, um, uh, resetting some values, resetting some culture things, resetting some things in the weight room, resetting some things uh, within our program. Uh, and so every year has, has its importance. Uh, but uh, without question, uh, our, our progress on the field is, is what uh, uh, we all need to, to see improvement on, and we're excited about that. About a quarter of the way back on the left side. John High Fox 7 Austin. Coach, you, you mentioned Deuce earlier, Deuce Vaughn, talking about him being a humble, humble player, and it feels like he has a lot to prove. How nice is it to have a guy like that on your squad, and where do you want to see him improve this season? It's great to have him on our squad. He's got the ultimate respect of our older guys in, in how he conducts himself, not only on the field and in the weight room, but more importantly, off the field and in the classroom and in our community. He does everything right. Uh, but uh, just finding more and more creative ways to get the kid the football. I think he's an underrated running back. And what I mean by that is everybody knows his ability to catch the ball out of the backfield and make people miss and get matchup problems there. Uh, but just in, a, in our two-back offense, uh, behind a fullback or in a one-back set with Skyler or Will, uh, he's such a terrific running back with great vision and great balance uh, and sees things so well. Uh, but uh, I know he needs to improve on his pass protection. I know he wants to improve on, on more adjustments and checks and more, more defensive identity uh, things that he wants to uh, master, so to speak. But uh, uh, what a terrific young man to have in our program. We got a question on the outside, halfway back on the left. Yeah, Coach Parker Thune, 24 7 Sports. Good to see you. Uh, curious, Oklahoma obviously has won six consecutive Big 12 titles. Yet you and your team are 2-0 and against Lincoln Riley and the Sooners during your tenure at Kansas State. Uh, I guess my question is, what's worked? How have you been able to have the Sooners number like that? Well, I don't know if we have anybody's number, that's for sure. I've got so much respect for, for Lincoln and his staff and his team, uh, and they're a great, great team, and they deserve to be on top uh, because of their body of work. It's not a one-game season. It's a body of work, and Lincoln and Oklahoma have proven that year in and year out, uh, that they're the elite team uh, in our conference. I think the biggest thing that um, we try to go into the, that game, as well as other ones, but that game in particular is don't, don't look at the, the name on the front of the jersey. Uh, don't worry about what the pundits say. Don't worry about what the, the experts say, uh, but let's just play our game and let's, uh, let's keep finding a way uh, to make a play. We were down 35 to 14 in the, in the third, corner, third quarter and really nobody batted an eye. And then we were able to make a play uh, with Skyler to Deuce. And then we were able to get a big turnover with Jerron McPherson and block a punt. Next thing you know, it's 35-35. And so it's just a belief. It's a mindset that uh, we have the opportunity to be successful if we play to our capabilities. And in the same respect, uh, we could get run out of the gym by them as well. Uh, but uh, uh, it's just uh, uh, the fact that uh, our kids have, have risen to the occasion. Question on the aisle about halfway back. Hey, Coach, Ariana Vidia with the Dallas Morning News. We talked a little bit um, about resetting values. Looking back on your first two seasons, what lessons did you learn, and how are you applying it to resetting those values? Like, on top of that, what specifically are you resetting? Well, we, we came up with some core values at the end of this season um, that uh, uh, were going to be exemplified with our, with our student athletes on and off the field. Uh, one was discipline, one was commitment, one was toughness, and the last one was to be selfless. And they're kind of plastered all over our veneer, veneer complex right now. And we all saw the problems that COVID created and the lack of building and, and, and keeping relationships. I saw a lot of you, but I didn't get a chance to really visit with a lot of you. I saw our team, but other than seeing them at practice or coming in and out of a meeting, you didn't get a chance to really see them. They never were in the offices because of our, our COVID uh, protocols. They didn't get a ch you didn't get a chance to say, hey, I'm going to sit with you in this meal because we we're all at individual tables or we had a to-go box. Uh, you didn't get a chance to visit with them in the locker room because we had two locker rooms and, and kids scattered all over the place. And, and so when I say reset, it, uh, the, the building of relationships uh, is the biggest thing that us coaches need to do with our student athletes. And we lost a lot of that. And some people would say, well, you still had the opportunity. You bet you you did, but not like you do 
when it's normal, when guys just circle up to the office all the time. In the spring, even though we weren't maybe in a uh, 20 hour period, just in an eight hour period, we required our kids to just swing by our offices and say hello, just so that we could get that eye contact and that, and that um, uh, facial and, and, and touching of a handshake or whatever it may be as the, as the semester went on, as we started to clear up some of our COVID things, just to build bonds. Mental health is a real deal. And uh, I saw that this year uh, in 2020 throughout the entire season, as well as uh, my own daughter who was a freshman at K-State and said, I don't like college. Well, how could you like college when you're sitting in your dorm room all the time? Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, I saw kids suffer from mental health when they see a buddy taken off the practice field and know that he's the roommate, so he's next. Um, and so we just kind of reevaluated and reset everything and, and building of relationships and showing the kids you share, you care and showing the kids you love them is, is a really critical factor. Okay, we got a question over here on the right side, about halfway back, and we'll go over there. Yeah, Chris, Barry Trammell with the Oklahoma. And last season, you had to replace your entire offensive line. This year, it's the opposite. You got virtually everyone back. How much of an advantage is that, and how can you build off that for this season? Yeah, that's a great question, and it's a great point in the fact of when we came into the spring of 2020, that was the biggest question mark we had. We lost five senior offensive linemen and didn't know what we had other than a, uh, some recruits and some guys that had been in reserve roles. The first practice we had with those guys was in the middle of August, and so we really didn't get a chance to, to shore up that problem until we got through the entire season. We ended up playing nine guys in the offensive line uh, extensively, and they're all back. And so I really think it's going to be one of the strengths of our football team is on the offensive line. And it's going to have to be for us to keep Skyler healthy and for us to uh, get him get him time to get the ball to so many of the, of the people that we have that can do some things with it. So uh, I, I'm excited to have that group back. And it's led by Noah Johnson, who's a tremendous uh, leader for us and, and is a guy that uh, is also kind of a pulse of our team. Question on the outside left. Hey, Coach Sean J. Rudge from Dave Campbell's Texas Football. You obviously have won a national championship as an FCS head coach. Uh, Lance Leipold has won at the small college level. Matt Campbell has a D3 background. What is transferable to this level, and what stuff that you've kind of had to adjust to? Well, football is football is the one thing that's transferable. Um, anybody can beat anybody on any, any given Saturday if you're if you're not prepared to play. And uh, I. I I know that uh, we had a kid last year we brought in as a, as a transfer named Briley Moore, a grad transfer that was at Northern Iowa. And uh, I knew he would be able to play uh, at Kansas State just because I knew the brand of football and the kid to have a chip on his shoulder. So um, football is football. The thing that I've had to probably learn the most, and it's not because of the transition of levels of play, but more the, the transition of the transfer portal that um, you're going to lose kids and kids are going to leave your program. Kids left every program in the country. I'm for the one-time transfer rule. I, I, I think it's great. I think it's awful when a kid has to sit and miss a year of football because this game is so great and it comes and goes so fast. Uh, but uh, um, just trying to manage a roster for all of us moving forward is going to be really, really tricky and it's going to create uh, a lot of potentially a lot of parity uh, in the fact of you may have to turn over a position group uh, every year. Question about halfway back on the left. Hey, Chris Ivan Mazel of on3.com. Uh, you, everybody's got more seniors coming back this year. Does that mean the product is going to be that much better? What are you expecting to see across the board in college football because of the experience? Yeah. Ivan, I sure hope so. Um, we have five super seniors, and they're all going to be impactful guys for us, obviously led by a quarterback. But uh, I, I hope the product's going to be a lot better uh, because you're going to have so many kids that uh, are going to be in the program a year longer. Um, and and uh, I know that last year the product of, of football across all landscapes wasn't probably to anybody's uh, real liking because – you were missing kids every week, um, NFL to college to high school. And uh, this year, hopefully, and I know there's still some variants out there, but hopefully with vaccinations and protocols, uh, we can have 
everybody with full capacity football teams in full capacity stadiums so that college football can can give the uh, the great recognition that it deserves as a as a, a great great uh, product question on the rows three and then we'll move to the outside uh, Cole Thompson, LonghornsCountry.com. Coach, you are adding in a veteran tight end and Daniel Ignato Behe. So for being able to have a guy who's been at multiple different schools and multiple different offensive sets, what does that do for you? And especially the offense, more than just as a locker room presence, but also on the field at a position that you're replacing with Bradley Moore. Uh, Bebe is what we call him, is going to be a difference maker. He's a tremendous, tremendous football player. Uh, we were able to see him this spring. Uh, he can do everything as a tight end. He can really run. He can block. He can move. Um, but his biggest impact has been in our locker room. His big, biggest impact has been uh, talking and communicating and being there as a mentor for some of our younger players that, you know, everybody wants instant success and instant gratification by playing. And he's done a great job of telling kids, be patient and uh, telling kids that uh, there's a process and uh, don't rush the process and don't take any shortcuts and uh, been so impressed with him uh, as a person off the field and I'm as, ex as I'm excited to watch him on the field and I see his rapport with Skyler and Will and our quarterbacks. He's out there all the time uh, running routes, catching balls and, and uh, we know he's going to be an impact for us. Question on the outside right. Hey, Coach, Cole Carmody with Go Powercat. Um, you guys were picked seventh in the preseason poll. I was just wondering if you had a comment on that. Um, I, I think it's pretty irrelevant um, in my mind. I, somebody told me we were picked ninth the first year and we finished third. And, um, you know, you could be picked second and finish. You still have to tee it up and you have to be better every week and better every day. And for us to continue to stack great days and give ourselves an opportunity every week to be successful, that's what we're trying to do. Final question for Coach on the outside left. Uh, Chisholm Holland, 107.7 The Franchise in Oklahoma City. Obviously, the NIL conversation generally is centered around the bigger schools, but a school like Kansas State obviously has some players that we're all very familiar with. Just curious, at a school like Kansas State, do you see it as a disadvantage uh, for NIL like it's being presented or just an opportunity for some of your guys who are producing? Two things on that. One, I'm in favor of, of kids being able to profit off their name, image, and likeness. If they can make some money uh, doing something, um, I'm all for it. They, uh, they deserve it. Second part of that is I think Manhattan is a home run for name, image, and likeness. Uh, we are the main story in town, Kansas State University and, and our athletic department, and uh, our kids are out in the community uh, at all of our sports. And so if a kid comes to Manhattan, he, everybody's going to know him in that community, and he's going to have a lot of opportunities. So um, for kids that uh, thinking you have to go to the big big market areas, I, I disagree. I think uh, uh, Manhattan's a gold mine for, for NIL. Okay, Coach, thank you very much for your comments, and best of luck for the season. Thanks. Look forward to seeing everybody this fall.